Words are precious conveyors of reality. They not only shape the way that we think, but they determine our choices and our actions. They shape the kind of cultures that we live in. If you want to change society, you begin by changing language. Our adversary knows this all too well. In recent decades, a strategic redefining of many critical words has led to dramatic changes in our culture for the worse. People have absorbed these false redefinitions uncritically, including many Christians, and in doing so, they've become unwitting agents in advancing non-Christian systems of belief that are tearing our nation apart. This is a disaster for the church and for the society. To turn things around, we have to recover the true biblical definitions of at least 10 key critical words. One of these words is truth. What is truth? This question was famously poised by Pontius Pilate to Jesus during his inquisition, and it continues to ring down through the ages right into the present. Many people today speak of your truth or my truth. They talk of truth as if it's a personal or a private belief. But truth isn't merely what you or I believe. It has a real objective meaning. We live in a real world that exists wholly apart from your beliefs about it. You may believe that you can step off your roof and be supported in thin air. That might be your truth, but is it the truth? Put it to the test and you'll quickly discover that gravity exists, whether you believe it or not. So what is truth? Simply put, truth is that which accords with factual objective reality. Truth accurately describes what exists or what happened. It's synonymous with fact. Words that express the opposite of truth are illusion, falsehood, lie, fiction, fantasy, or delusion. Truth exists whether we like it or not, said Charles Chaput, the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Philadelphia. We don't create truth, we find it and we have no power to change it to our tastes. The world around us provides a fixed point for truth. It exists apart from our ideas or thoughts or beliefs about it, but only the eternal unchanging creator of the universe provides a solid, reliable point of reference for reality. Apart from him, truth has no meaning. It vanishes into a morass of subjectivism and relativism. God wants us to know the truth and to live in it. And happily, he's revealed truth to us. We can know things truthfully by observing God's creation using the tools of science, of logic, and of reason. He has also revealed truth to us through his written word in the Bible. And most powerfully, God has revealed the truth by coming to earth in human flesh Jesus Christ is Emmanuel, God with us. When he walked with us, Jesus claimed to speak the truth and to be the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He also said, for this reason I've come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone on the side of the truth listens to my voice. So. Why is truth important? Well, we can think about it quite simply. Imagine any kind of a society like a marriage or a family, a business or an organization or even a whole nation where everyone lies and no one can be trusted. That society would quickly cease to function. It turns out that a commitment to truth, to honesty and to trustworthiness is necessary for healthy relationships and for society's basic functioning. Truth is essential for many vital aspects of society. You could think about our system of justice. For it to function at all, truth is essential. With witnesses, committing to telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Truth is essential for both knowledge and wisdom. You could think about Harvard University. Its famous motto is veritas. That's the Latin word for truth. Without a search for what's true, there would be no university, nor could there be subjects like science or journalism or the study of history. Professor Sinan Aral of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology said it very well. He said, some notion of truth is central to the proper functioning of nearly every realm of human endeavor. If we allow the world to be consumed by falsity, we're inviting catastrophe. And tragically, that's precisely what we're inviting right now. Today, most people in the West no longer believe in objective truth. 
In 1987, the University of Chicago's Alan Bloom wrote in his bestseller, The Closing of the American Mind, there's one thing a professor can be certain of, absolutely. Almost every student entering university believes that truth is relative. That was over three decades ago. Today, those former students of his are leading all of our major institutions. Whether it's media or government or business or entertainment, the leaders today mock the idea of objective truth. For them, truth has been redefined. It now means a personal, subjective sense of reality that exists only in the mind. This so-called truth isn't something that you discover, it's something that you create. A few years ago, an interviewer with the Family Policy Institute of Washington State ventured onto the campus of the University of Washington in Seattle. He was there to ask students some questions. The subsequent video that he posted on YouTube went viral. The interviewer was a white male. He was probably in his 30s. He went up to one student and he said, if I told you that I was a woman, what would your response be? The student replied, hey, good for you. Another student said, I don't have a problem with it. The interviewer continued, well, what if I told you that I was Chinese? How would you respond? The student replied, I might be a little surprised, but I'd say, good for you. He pressed further. What if I told you that I was six feet, five inches tall? He was much shorter than that. The student paused momentarily and then answered, well, I would say that as long as you're not hindering society or causing harm to other people, well, I feel like that should be an okay thing. Would you tell me I was wrong? Asked the interviewer. Oh, I don't feel like that's my place to say someone is wrong or to draw lines or boundaries, said the student. So today, if you're a five foot, nine inch tall white male, but you feel like your authentic identity is a six foot five Chinese woman, well, that can be your truth. No one can say otherwise. You see, today there are no fixed points, no boundaries that divide truth from lies or good from evil. Now, when this happens, society disintegrates. A rising tide of dishonesty and deception erodes trust, the glue that holds society together. Relationships fracture, mistrust, suspicion, and cynicism become pervasive, and our institutions begin to falter. When a search for objective truth erodes, then rational civil discussion and debate are undermined. Agendas and outcomes are pursued using any means possible, including the creation of false narratives, deception, censorship, manipulation. A society that abandons truth will devolve into a dark dystopia of tribalism, chaos, and tyranny. George Orwell foresaw this in his disturbing novel, 1984. In one of the most poignant lines from that book is an exchange between the two principal characters, O'Brien and Winston. O'Brien said, you believe that reality is something objective, external, existing in its own right. But I tell you, Winston, that reality is not external. Reality exists in the human mind and nowhere else and not in the individual mind, which can make mistakes, and in any case soon perishes, but only in the mind of the party. Whatever the party holds to be truth is truth. You see, in the end, we really only have two choices. If we choose to abandon ultimate reality, the God of creation, then reality will be defined by the party, that is, the group that holds power. Those are the options. The notion that everyone can determine reality for themselves, why that's just unworkable, it's unlivable. It will inevitably lead us into societal chaos and that in turn is going to lead to tyranny with the party stepping in to restore order and define reality for everyone. So what kind of society do you want to live in? A society where truth can be known and accords with factual objective reality or a society where people create different personal ideas of truth eventually eroding into kind of a chaos so that someone powerful has to step in and provide a clarity and order. What understanding of truth 
do you want to shape society? Words matter, they are powerful. All genuine societal change, for better or for worse, begins with a shift in language and definitions. God reveals the true definition of words like truth in His Word, the Bible. These true definitions, they're not just true for Christians, they're true for everyone. But unless we, as followers of Jesus, know the true definitions and build our lives on them, and unless we defend these true definitions in the public square, our societies will be built on false, counterfeit definitions and reap the terrible consequences. Do you want to uphold and defend the biblical concept of truth? We can help.